At the turn of the 13th century, Eustace Busket fought, raided, killed, embezzled, betrayed, revenged, impersonated, and prayed his way across France, Spain, and England. Although better known as Eustace the Monk, this younger son of a country lord spent little time in a monastery, choosing instead to live the life of a steward, mercenary, and a pirate. Born in 1170 near Boulogne in France, Eustace's story really begins in Toledo, Spain, where he is rumored to have studied black magic and, according to the contemporary work of Histoire de Dux de Normandie, no one would believe the marvels he accomplished nor those which happened to him many times. Ultimately giving up his parlor tricks, he soon decided to join the Benedictine monastery at St. Samar Abbey near Calais. At some point around 1190, Eustace's father was murdered. Eustace left the Benedictines to seek revenge against Hanfroy de Hersingen, the supposed killer. Agreeing to duel through surrogates, Hersingen's champion won, and thus the trial by combat acquitted him of the charges. With his failed revenge, and now preferring life outside of the monastery, Eustace next went to work for Count Renaud de Damonton of Boulogne as his steward, peer, and bailiff. Most important for the future life of Eustace, his duties included oversight of the Count's property. After Heron Singhan instituted a plot to discredit him, the Count asked for an accounting, and Eustace fled into the forest of Boulonnais, circa 1204. Taking his flight as a sign of his guilt, the Count seized Eustace's property and burned his land. Not one to take such a slight lying down, Eustace then launched a series of raids against the Count's property, including burning down two mills that the Count had recently built. Whether or not he was really guilty of embezzling, as the Count came to believe, after destroying the Count's property, he was officially an outlaw and one with a very powerful enemy. Having at this point been a supposed sorcerer, a monk, and an administrator, Eustace decided to take up a new career and that would be piracy. Sailing in the English Channel and the Strait of Dover, Eustace sometimes worked for himself and at other times as a mercenary between 1205 and 1212. Making something of a name for himself, together with his brothers, Eustace ultimately commanded as many as 30 ships under the flag of King John of England. Raiding along the coast of Normandy and the Channel Islands, he and his brothers established several bases on the islands, including the Castle Cornet in Guernsey. Not satisfied with the tremendous spoils it accumulated thus far, around 1212 Eustace began playing both sides, raiding along the English coast as well. At this same time, the Count de Martin struck an alliance with King John. Officially switching sides at this point, Eustace took his skills back to France, where he found work with Prince Louis. Together, they supported the English rebellion in 1215 to 1216, when King John refused to honor the negotiations that culminated in the Magna Carta, with the idea that Louis would eventually take the English throne. King John died, however, and with the rise of Henry III, the rebellion lost support. Undeterred, in August 1217, France sent its fleet across the Channel, led by Robert de Courtenay, with Eustace as an admiral of its 70-plus ships, some of which were heavily overloaded, bearing weapons, men, and horses. The English were prepared and met the French fleet at Sandwich. Seizing control of the fleet from Eustace de Courtenay ordered the ships into an ill-advised attack, losing the wind, and the French fleet suffered serious losses due in no small part to the English releasing lime into the wind, which blinded the French troops. Eventually, de Courtenay and the knights were taken for ransom, and the regular soldiers were simply slaughtered. As for Eustace, he was found hiding in the bilge of his ship. As with the other notables captured in the battle, he offered to pay a fortune in ransom for his release, but the irritated English, whom Eustace had betrayed only a few years before, decided to not take the money in his case. Instead, they tied him down and had a man by the name of Stephen Crabb lop off his head. In the largely fictional 1284 work covering his life, The Romance of Eustace the Monk, it concluded of his death, no man can live long who spends his days doing ill. Eventually, Louis relinquished his claim to the throne of England, and Eustace and his brothers were dispossessed of their Channel Islands lands. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button. And as always, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, if you're looking for something else right now, why not check out our podcast? It's called Brain Food. We talk about things like this, but in a kind of more chit-chatty, laid-back format. So if you're into something like that, do check it out. Just search Brain Food in iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, thank you for watching.